Well, good morning. What an honor and a what an honor and a privilege it is to be before you again to present unto you uh, none other than the things that the Lord has shared with me. Because we can't we can't pass along things that we don't ourselves believe. Okay, that's a dangerous thing to do. So we'll just start with a word of prayer and then we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace, your peace, and your mercy. We thank you for the country that we live in. We pray for its leaders, Lord, every single one of them. We ask that this uh, study would be for the edification of the members of your body and that I would be hid behind the cross and the Holy Spirit would be the real teacher. I'm glad for those that are here. Uh, watch over those that are coming. Uh, I just thank you, Lord, that, that the saints that are here are, are, are not here because they're interested in seeing or hearing a specific person, but because they love the Word of God and they love uh, feasting on it and learning in it and growing in it and passing it along. So we just thank you for all these things, and it's all because of our wonderful, great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So like I said, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Now, this is a pretty basic thing, but... Uh, there are some things in here that uh, I want to see if you can grasp, if you can, if you can follow with me here. So we're going to look at a couple words in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. I want us to really focus on the words received, stand, and saved. Okay, received, stand, and saved. So I might be calling on one of you to read we got some verses here. Uh, I'll call on someone to read, or and then maybe I'll read the other ones because we got a limited amount of time. So the word received is used 124 times, okay? And the word receive is used 121 times. So that's 225 times just in the New Testament alone does the Holy Spirit use this word. So it's kind of an important word to, to, to grasp and to understand what it means, right? So what does the word received mean? You can throw out anything. Okay. Anything else received? Accept. Okay. Hear. To hear. Okay, I see this word meaning three different things, okay, depending on the context, right? We always, as much as we can, we want to use the context of the Word of God to define a word for us, okay? As much as we can. So I see it meaning basically three different things. Number one is to take something or someone, okay? Number two is to grant access to something or someone. And number three means to believe something or someone. So those are the three definitions that I see. Now we're going to look at some verses, and we're going to see if we can figure out what con what, which definition fits, okay? And we're going to use the context of the verse to figure it out. So does somebody want to read Mark 15? Mark 15, and verse 23. Mark fifteen twenty three. Loud and proud. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. Okay, so what's the definition of that word received? He received it not. He, he didn't take it, right? He, he didn't take it. Okay. So how about John thirteen? Let's go to John thirteen. Verses 26 through 30. John 13, 26 through 30. Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread that I have picked. And having picked the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him, and Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. 230. For some thought, because Judas had the money box, that Jesus had said to him, Why those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. 
and received the piece of bread. He then went out immediately, and it was night. So what's the definition of the word received there? He received the sop. He took it, right? He took it. Okay. Now John 18. John 18, verses 2 and 3. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oft times reported thither with, excuse me, resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. So Judas then, having received a band of men and officers, what is, what's the definition there? He took, he took them, right? He took them with him. So that means to take, okay? So in those three verses, right, the word received means to take something or someone, okay? Makes sense, right? So now let's go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. And the apostles, when they returned, told him all that they had done. And he took them and went aside quietly into the desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. And all the people, when they knew it, followed him, and received them, and he spake unto them of the kingdom of God, and healed them that had need of healing. Okay, so he took them to a private place. Verse 11, and the people, when they knew it, they followed him, and he received them. So what is the definition of received there? He was in a private place, like a private club, right? And when the people came, he received them. So what definition will we use for the word received there? He granted them access, right? To grant access to, right? He granted them access to that private meeting, right? Does that make sense? Okay, that fits? We're using scripture to define scripture, right? So the first couple ones was to take something or someone. And now we're looking at he grant access to someone or someone. So he granted access to this private meeting. Okay. So how about Luke 10? Next chapter over. Luke 10, verse 38. Luke 10, 38. Now it came to pass as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So what's the definition of the word received there? Granted access, right? Come into my house. I grant you access into my house, right? Or sometimes we say we received a warm welcome. You know what I mean? You, you have been granted access, or she granted access to the house. And that's the same word received, right? So we're looking at context defining the word. How about John? John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. 19 through 21. So when they had rode, rode about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. When they, then they willingly received him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at land whither they went. Okay, so you got all these fishermen on the boat and they're all scared. They see Jesus walking on the water and it says what? Verse 21. And they willingly what? Received him. So they granted him access to the boat. Correct? Okay. Do all those definitions make sense? Because we're looking at that same word. 
but it's important to look at the context to see what that word means, okay? So in those three instances, the word received means to grant access to something or someone, okay? Everybody following so far? Okay, now let's go to John chapter 1. Verses 11 and 12. John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believed on his name. That's a good one, right? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him. So what does the word received here mean? To believe, right? To believe. He came unto his own, and his own did not believe him, right? They did not believe he was their Messiah. But as many as did re believe him, right? To them he gave power to become the sons of God. It even says, even to them that believe on his authority, right? How about John 17? John 17 verses 6 through 8. John 17, 6 through 8. I have never done my name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed not thou didst send me. So the word received there, right? I've manifested your name. I told everything you told me, I told them. For I have given them the words which you gave me, and they did what? They believed them. They received them. That's so the word received there means to believe someone or something. Okay? Is everybody following here? How about John 3? I made this easy. I kept them all in the book of John. <laughs> John chapter 3. Verses 31 through 36. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earth, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. So what does the word received mean there? Same thing, right? To believe something, right? Mm -hmm. What and what he hath seen and heard that he testifies, and no man believes his testimony. But he that believes his testimony, what? Hath set to his seal that God is true, right? <laughs> That person's I believe it I'm gonna set my seal to it I believe it okay so the word received there means to believe so you see how depending on the context the word received to mean a couple different things okay so now that we understand and, 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 and agree that we need the context to define the word received which means in the in these instances to believe something or someone now let's go back to 1st Corinthians chapter 15 and let's let's tackle verse 1 here So moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received. So what does the word received here mean? Believed. Believed. Do we all see that? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you have believed. In case you're not sure, in case you're not sure still about if this word means received or not, let's look at the, the rest of that verse, right? 
because that's important, this little next part. In case you're doubting what that word received there means, it says, and wherein ye stand. Okay, because I made a statement when I preached on Romans that our salvation is, is right here. This is our salvation when it talks about received it. Because if you received it, you believed it. Are you saved or unsaved the moment you believe? You are saved. Okay. And wherein ye stand. Okay. So that's our next word, right? Received. We got that one figured out. Okay. And we can see that in 1 Corinthians, that word received means to believe it. Okay. Now the next word we want to look is stand. Because he says, and wherein ye stand. Okay. So before I ask a couple questions about this stand, I want you to keep in memory what I preached unto you in Romans 5 when we went through the grace package, okay? I want you to keep in memory what I preached unto you in Romans 5, 1 and 2, and this study will be profitable to you. You will profit from this study. It will not be in vain, okay? Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, right, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, right? That and, that and that grace means that grace package, right? That we talked about, our justification, our, our Christ's righteousness, our eternal life, right? It's that package. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, okay? So that's our stand, is, is in that truth, is on not our faithfulness, right? It's on the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That's what we're standing on. So, even at the end of this epistle, right? They are told to stand fast, right? That's 1 Corinthians 16, 13. We can go through them. we got a little bit of time. So, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, right? Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. So he told, the, he told the Corinthians to stand fast. He told the Galatians to stand fast in, in, in chapter 5 and verse 1. He told the Philippians to stand fast in Philippians 1.27 and 4.1. He told the Thessalonians to stand fast in 2 Thessalonians 2.15. For a little study on your own, you know what else? He told the Ephesians, he told the Colossians, he told Timothy, and he told Titus. So you guys can look for those on your own. But every single one of Paul's epistles, and he told the Romans because we just read about it, and wherein you stand, okay? So this stand that we have is because we have, what, received or believed a testimony, okay? So now John 3.33, I think is a good springboard into the testimony that we have believed and wherein we stand. And we just went through John when we just read it, okay? So what did John 3.33 say? Right, it was about that testimony. And he that receives his testimony, right? He that believes his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. Okay, that's a good springboard into this testimony wherein we stand. So now let's look at John, or I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's go to the beginning of the book of Corinthians, right? Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through nine. Praise be unto you and grace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. That in everything we are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even the testimony of Christ was confirmed through me, so that you come behind and so kept waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ God so, is faithful by whom you will call unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord so Paul says I thank God on behalf of you for that grace package right that God gave you right that in everything he wants you to be enriched by this knowledge right in all utterance and all knowledge 
even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So were the Corinthians saved or unsaved people? They were saved, right? The Bible's written to saved people, right? So well, there's a lot of confusion in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 about the gospel, and we're going to take care of one of these big confusion. It's called Lordship Salvation, okay? He says, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, and then verse 9, who shall also confirm you unto the end, right? Our salvation is safe and secure, right? Because who's, who's the one that we're counting on for? It's not ourselves. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to confirm us all the way. The moment it was confirmed in us was when? So when was the testimony of Christ confirmed in the Corinthians? When was it confirmed in you? When you believed it, right? When you received that truth and believed it, okay? That's when the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. It was when someone declared or delivered unto you that which they also received or believed, right? And then you received it and believed it, okay? Isn't that how it works? Ephesians 1.13, right? In whom you also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that, you did what? You believed it, right? You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, right? That's a, that was a one and done deal, right? Our salvation, it didn't, it didn't start depending on us, and it doesn't finish depending on us, right? right? We are safe and secure because of Christ's faithfulness, because God is faithful, okay? Because 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We have received the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I speak, right? We also believe, and therefore we speak, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna speak because we don't believe something. The reason why we pass this stuff on is because we know it's true, we believe it, right? So that's the whole purpose. We don't pass along lies. We pass along truth, right? So now let's so now let's look at first Corinthians fifteen one and, and we're gonna and we're gonna go to from verse one to verse three and go back to back here because the same word is used. So first Corinthians fifteen one and three. So moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have believed, right? We, we, he believed it. They believed it. The word received there means believed. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. So what does the received here mean? That's right. If, if the first word means believed, and Paul says, I also believed it. Paul is saying, this is the same truth that I believe that I am passing along to you. Okay? Just having that understanding of those two received words, okay? That does away with lordship salvation. That does away with, uh, it's a good way to defend the Acts 9 position. It's a good way to continue to defend the gospel of the grace of God. Because Paul didn't get saved by the kingdom gospel. Paul never preached the kingdom gospel. Paul's from the very first, he says, this is something that I also believe, that I also received, right? The same thing that saved me is the same thing that saved you. That's a, that's a key thing here for when we're trying to tackle the rest of this verse, right? Because verse 2 is tough. Right? That's why we need, to, we need to have a firm understanding of what this received is and what the word stand meant. So what was it that was preached or delivered unto the Corinthians and you and, in fact, Paul? What was, it, what was delivered unto you? How that, that's verse, there you go, 3 and 4, right? How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel that we believe. That's the same gospel that Paul believed that saved him. And he's saying, I believe the same thing I passed along to you. The same thing you also, the same thing that you received or believed is the same thing I received or believed. Okay? So now our last word is going to be saved. Right? Because verse, verse 2 is the tough verse here. <laughs> so what does it mean? What does saved mean? The simple, a simple answer, not in depth. Delivered. delivered. That's the simple answer. To be delivered from something or someone. Okay. 
That's what it means, to be delivered from something or someone. So in Matthew 8, 25, right, his disciples came to him and saying, Lord, save us, we perish, right? That was when the, the ship was in the big storm and the Lord was sleeping. Now, obviously that meant deliver us from the storm, right? Okay. In 1 Corinthians 1, 18, for the preaching of the cross, right, which is what we're, we're tackling here is the preaching of the cross, is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. That means to be delivered from the penalty of sin. Okay, those, those are easy. I just wanted to use two. The word saved is used there a lot. You can, you can look at it yourself because there's, there's one that talks about being saved from the wrath to come. That's talking about the tribulation period. But those are, the, those are the two main ones. Delivered from something here, delivered from the penalty of sin here. Now, we've already agreed that the Corinthians were saved from the penalty of sin, and Paul was saved, right? Believed, received means believed in both them verses. So now it's time to tackle verse 2, okay? By which you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. So what does the word saved there mean? What does the word delivered there mean from? Because we've already agreed. Verse 1 means believed. Verse 3 that Paul says, I also believed. that And wherein you stand, so they're already saved people. Right. If, if they stand fast in what they believe. So the, 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 that sounds like a conditional thing. If... It, it, it sounds like a conditional, but it also says that you either did or you didn't. Is it, but is that what so we're saved from what though what's the word saved there mean it's not it's not sin it's not the penalty of sin here because they were already saved no, that's that's why I said it's a tough verse brother in other words the same thing that you believe you're saved by it and you don't want to say if you keep in memory in other words if you truly believe it and you stand fast in it I by which also you can be delivered if you keep in memory. Yeah. So now, now that, that is where Lordship salvation comes from. Yeah. If, because if you're living like this, then you really didn't believe. <laughs> so that, but that's, that's not what this verse is saying. And we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna go through it. That's why this is a tough verse, okay? So, I, so if we read the next, if we read the end of it, we're gonna, we're, it's going to help us here. I believe it's going to help us. Because really what we want to know is what is it that the Corinthians and you and I can be delivered from if we just keep in memory what, I, what, what was preached unto us. So the ending of this verse, the, the rest of that verse, I think is going to help us to really see what it is that God want, the Holy Spirit wants to deliver us from. Okay? Unless you have believed in vain. Okay? Unless you have believed in vain. Now the the key to understanding, I believe, the whole verse 2, okay, is going to be found in verses 9 and 10 of the same 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10. I think that's going to be the key that's going to help us understand what can we be delivered from. What does the word saved mean? And what does it mean unless you have believed in vain? This, this, is, going to, this is going to tell us. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not fit or meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, right? And his grace package, right, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I but the grace of God that was with me. So Paul says, I persecuted the church of God before I received this grace package. Right. Right? Did his life change after he got this package? Right? He was delivered from all the errors that were causing him to rail against the true and living God. Yeah, but, go ahead. But, but, but. I hear, I see that I have to stand fast, Paul said. Yes. He stood fast in what he what he believed. Yes. And this is what he said. If you truly believe it, then you'll stand fast in it. He if says, you if you keep in memory what I preached unto yeah. you, you can be delivered from something. If you stand fast. Go ahead, Lamar. Because <laughs> he said, we're delivered from unbelief. 
we're going to see in the next thing, right? Because he says, the grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, right? Unless you have believed to no profit. That's what vain means, right? To no profit. So we can be delivered from all of the doctrinal errors that cause us to have an unprofitable Christian walk. If we simply keep in memory what was preached unto us and what we believed, we can be saved or delivered from all the errors that knock us off of our stand, right? Because understanding the gospel that delivered us from the penalty of sin, right? Understanding our standing in Christ should produce what? A godly walk. Understanding these things should deliver us or save us from all the errors that make us walk contrary to our stand if we simply keep in memory what we've believed. So if our walk does not represent our position in Christ, then we need to go back to the basics here and see, because there's something lacking in our understanding, right? These truths should be profiting us in our lives. Paul says, when it was bestowed upon me, it was not in vain, right? Before, I was like this. But when he gave it to me, oh man, my whole life changed. In fact, I labored more abundantly than they all did, right? Unless you have believed this truth and it's not profiting you in every aspect of your walk. That's what we can be delivered from. You can be saved from all kinds of errors if you just simply keep in memory what you believed, what was preached unto you, what's preached unto you every Sunday here. That's why it's, that's, you know how many times Paul says remember? If you simply remember. So 1 Corinthians 15, 58, right? The end, the end of this, this chapter. Therefore what? Therefore my beloved brethren, be ye what? Steadfast and unmovable, right? Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that what? Your labor is not in vain right this these truths they should be profiting us in our christian walk right what was the corinthians problem what what, what was the what was the galatians problem right when they were told to stand because satan's trying to move us right the, the were the is the corinthian salvation in doubt by the apostle paul no no what was in doubt their conduct, right? What, why are you walking like this? Why, you, this? You should not be walking like this. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, right? When he, told, when he told the Thessalonians, he told them to stand fast. What had they walked away from? What had they been moved away from? The rapture, right? He says, don't you remember when I was with you? Do you remember I told you these things, right? They got caught up and someone told them they missed the rapture. So they got moved away from the resurrection, right? Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to look at, fifth, I'll read 15 through 17. 1 Corinthians 4, 15 through 17. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beg you, be you followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into what? Remembrance, right? Into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Right? Let me, let, me, let me bring you into remembrance of my ways. What was one of the Corinthians' problems? I am of Paul. I am of Cephas. I am of Apollos. I am of, I am of Christ. Right? Paul's like, let me remember. That, that, that's one of the errors that if you just keep in memory what I preached unto you. Our identity is not in Paul. Our identity is not in Peter. Our identity is in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's our stand, right? And wherein you stand. 
Don't let Satan come in and knock you off your stand, because that's that's what he that's what he's trying to do, right? Because he can't take your stand, because that's not dependent on us. God is the one that's faithful. He's the one that's going to confirm us into the end. So we can go into a whole other thing about our 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 conditional stand and our practical stand. Okay, the Satan cannot take your conditional stand away from you. Once you're saved, you're saved. But he sure can't make you live like the devil. And he sure can make your testimony be, why would, you know, he can make you walk contrary to how you're supposed to walk, right? He can destroy your Christian testimony. And when, when is the big grading going to be for our Christian life after we become members of the body of Christ? When, when, when is the grades going to be given? At the judgment seat of Christ, right? That's when, that's, that's when we're going to see how our homework did. I'm not going to judge your homework. One of these days, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to judge your, your homework, and that's your conduct, right? So if we're seeing things that are in our lives and we're walking un, uh, not the way we should, right? The Corinthians, he called them saints. He says, you guys were called, invited to be saints. Why are you not acting like it? He doesn't doubt their salvation. He didn't doubt the, uh, the Galatians' salvation, right? He said, I marvel that you are so soon what? removed you you guys got moved off your stand by something what error right their problem was what they got you began in the spirit now you think you're going to perfect yourself in the flesh right they they walked away from where they were standing in that grace package and they went back under the law the corinthians they just went the total opposite way to their own carnality right why not sin god's grace is abundant <laughs> how about first corinthians 11 2 1 Corinthians 11, 2. One and two. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2. So, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you, right? Keep in memory what I gave you. If you're having problems, go back to the beginning here. Let's start at the cross. Let's start at the gospel. Something's wrong. If we're not walking the way we should, something's wrong in our foundation. The way we built upon, our, our whole Christian walk is built upon Christ Jesus, right? His testimony, our stand in Christ. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.5 2 Thessalonians 2.5 This is when they got caught up in the uh, missing the resurrection and thinking that they were living in the end times. And there's a lot of people today that th that think that, right? So this 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 would be very profitable mm -hmm. that we can teach people. Second Thessalonians two five. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. What happened? You didn't keep in memory what I told you, right? And you got knocked off your stand. But you know what? If you just keep in memory, you can be delivered from that error. You can be delivered from that. Uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy 4, verse 6. 1 Timothy 4, 6. If you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto you have attained, right? If you just put these brethren in remembrance of these things, because we need to be reminded of things, folks. I need to be reminded constantly about things. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.4, we'll end with that, or 2.14, 2 Timothy 2.14. <clears throat> and you can go ahead and look up the word remember and remembrance in, in, in your personal studies we're told to remember a lot of things because we tend to forget things 2 Timothy 2 verse 14 of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive about not about words to no profit right but to the subverting of the hearers because that's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to, he's trying to subvert us with, with words and teachings that do not profit us in our Christian walk and in our testimony, right? 
But Paul says, you can be delivered from all those errors if you just simply keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed it, but it's not profiting your walking. That's the picture of the Corinthians, right? You received it, but why are you still living like this? It has not profited you in your life. Not your salvation, but your profit, but your, your, your Christian walk. So, I'm going to go through it one more time. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have believed, and wherein you stand. You stand in that finished work, right? By which also you are delivered from all kinds of errors if you just keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed it and it's not profiting you the way it should. Because I look at you Corinthians and I'm saying it's not profiting you because you're living like you're unsaved. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also believed. And look at me. Look at the change in my life, Paul says. I was before a persecutor. But now, you know what? I labored more abundantly than they all because of this wonderful grace package that I didn't even deserve. So I, re so I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also believed, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. That truth right there should transform our lives. And we should not be living the same way we were living before. But if it's not profiting you, then just go back and keep in memory what, what we've been sitting under sound teaching for a long time. You know, I, I know Brother Ricky probably, if you just keep in memory what I preached unto you last Sunday. If you just keep in memory what I preached unto you two Sundays ago. If you just keep in memory what I preached unto you, then you're going to have a profitable Christian walk. And when that day comes to be judged for your walk and your conduct, oh, you're going to have a profitable Bema seat. Ah, it's going to be a wonderful thing to stand and be told, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because you remembered what I passed on to the Apostle Paul, and you remember what Paul passed on to us. Any questions or comments? Ah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, uh, for how we can dig into it and, and use your word to define things, to help, to help deliver us from errors, Lord, deliver us from an unprofitable Christian walk and a Christian life, uh, being an unprofitable testimony. Uh, we're so thankful uh, for those that have gone before and have laid these things out. We're thankful that you left us your word. <laughs> you preserved your word uh, so that, that there's no doubt that this is the word of God. We can, we can trust it. We can set our seal that this is true, that Christ did die for our sins. He was buried, and on the third day, he did rise again from the dead. We're thankful for the grace that you bestowed upon us in this wonderful dispensation of amnesty, this wonderful dispensation of the grace of God, where all we need to do is, is stand firm, not on our own works or our own faithfulness, but upon the faithfulness of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross of Calvary. We're very thankful uh, just for everything that you give us. Uh, we pray for the rest of the, rest of the afternoon. Uh, pray for our brother Ricky, our Pastor Ricky, uh, who's been... Uh, uh, <laughs> We keep in remembrance all the things that he's taught us all these years and uh, gives us a good profitable assembly here. So I th I'm thankful for each one. And it's because of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.